Hello, my name is Danias Sogalis, Product Manager for AS Interface Products at Pepperall & Fuchs. Today we take a deep dive on implementing the Get Advanced Diagnostics add-on instruction. This add-on instruction significantly reduces the amount of programming necessary for collecting AS Interface Diagnostics at the Rockwell Automation PLC. Our agenda today has been broken down into the following topics. First, we begin by reviewing the contents of the AS Interface Toolkit. Next, we list the AS Interface Diagnostics and outputs available with the add-on instruction. We finish the presentation with a live demonstration. The focus of the demonstration is to understand the four steps to successfully program the add-on instruction into RS Logics 5000. The following diagram shows AS Interface as a subsystem to the PLC. Note, the AS Interface network is represented at the lowest level of the control architecture. In prior webinars, we discussed how AS Interface Diagnostics can be collected in a variety of ways. The first method we discussed was using the AS Interface Gateway Display. Another way to collect diagnostics remotely was using Control Tools or the Web Interface. Today, our focus is to show how easy it is to collect AS Interface Diagnostics at the Rockwell Automation PLC using the add-on instruction. Let's review what makes up an AS Interface Toolkit. First, EDS files, or electronic data sheets, are provided so that the AS Interface Gateway can be recognized in the RS Logix 5000 editor. Second, AS Interface Description files are provided for the various gateways such that the mapping of various AS Interface slaves or nodes are defined in the PLC. Finally, the Get Diagnostics Advanced Add-on Instruction is included in the toolkit and the focus of today's presentation. The Get Advanced Diagnostics Add-on Instruction is made up of three types of parameters. AS Interface Input Parameters get created by the programmer after the E instruction has been imported. Five input parameters must be configured. During the live demonstration, we will provide more specifics on these parameters. Note, highlighted in red are the input parameters that must be entered into the add-on instruction. Two types of AS Interface Diagnostics can be retrieved using the add-on instruction. AS Interface Diagnostics and AS Interface Outputs. Let's take a closer look at the AS Interface Diagnostics available with the add-on instruction. The following set of AS Interface Diagnostics includes list of activated slaves, list of detected slaves, list of projected slaves, slave delta list, list of peripheral faults, list of corrupted slaves, error counters, fault detector historic, fault detector new, and duplicate address list. If you need further details on this list of parameters, please contact Tech Support. Highlighted in red are also the status of where these diagnostics are monitored with the add-on instruction. Equally valuable are the AS Interface Output Diagnostics. The following set of AS Interface Outputs includes Peripherals OK, Address 0 Exist output, auto address possible, auto address active, configuration mode active, normal operation active, ASI power fail, offline ready, and configuration OK. Once again, if you need further details on this list of parameters, please contact Tech Support. Note, highlighted in red, are where the status of these outputs can be monitored. However, these can also be monitored in the controller tags of RS Logix 5000. Now, 
Let's review the four steps necessary to successfully program the AS Interface add-on instruction in RS Logix 5000, such that AS Interface Diagnostics can be retrieved at the Rockwell Automation PLC. This list of steps includes Step 1. Import the add-on instruction. Step 2. Create rung to move mailbox data. Step 3. Configure the input parameters. And Step 4. Monitor the AS Interface Diagnostics. At this point, we are ready to start the live demonstration to see just how easy it is to program the AS Interface add-on instruction in RS Logix 5000. So in the live demonstration, our focus will be introducing the add-on instruction into the RS Logix 5000 editor and showing how easy it is to use it. Note, we already have the AS Interface Gateway and determined a mapping. Thus, we begin with step 1, importing in our add-on instruction. We go to our toolbar and go to File, Import Component, and we're going to pick Add-on Instruction. We will navigate to our folder where our AS Interface Toolkit was stored. Here, we will double-click on our Add-on Instruction folder and select the Add-on Instruction to port in. After clicking OK, the process of the import begins. And at this point, we have successfully imported it, our add-on instruction. So step two of our process is creating and moving the mailbox data. First, we start by creating two controller tags in the RS Logix 5000 database. One thing to point out are that the variables must be of type integer and size 18. So the next step in our process is to add two copy instructions to move data to and from our mailboxes. In the first copy instruction, we will use the controller tag we created called ASI Mailbox Out and put it to a destination of Gateway 1 output. Now, as we look at the output tags here, we want to be sure we pick the first word where our mailbox begins. So we need to scroll through this group of 52 words and find where our mailbox begins, which is that word 32. Our length, since our array was set for 18, will also be set for 18. In the second copy instruction, we'll flip-flop. Our source now will be the gateway input data where our mailbox begins and we will put it to our controller tag of where our ASI mailbox in is. So let's begin. Once again, we'll leave our length at 18. Next, we start step three of the process by importing in the add-on instruction. From the toolbar, as we click on the add-on tab, we will see that our imported instruction is now available to be dragged into our ladder code. So let's add a new rung and introduce our add-on instruction. As we spoke earlier, there are five specific parameters we need to configure for our add-on instruction. These are the name of the instruction, the ASI network, 
the mailbox in, the mailbox out, and error counters. So as we give a name to our add-on instruction, it could be custom to the application. What's important with this first parameter is to make sure that you create the structure for this for the add-on instruction. So by right-clicking and selecting new, we create this tag in, in the database. As this completes, we see a lot of the parameters populated accordingly. The next parameter that we need to specify in our add-on instruction is the ASI network. This parameter can be set as either 0 or 1, 0 indicating network 1 and 1 indicating network 2. In our case, since we will be collecting diagnostics from network 1, we will leave this parameter for ASI network at 0. ByteSwap will keep at the default of 0. Mailbox in will set to the name given in our control tag database. And the same will be done for our mailbox out. So the next parameter we need to configure for the add-on instruction are the error counters. Here we could pick a custom name suitable for our application. We will specify the following name. We'll do the same with error counter B. Note in the left margin, the errors disappear and our instruction is now validated. So our final step in our process is to run the add-on instruction. A few things to point out. The add-on instruction does not run continuously. Each execution requires that the run go from false to true. Therefore, what we want to do is introduce a toggle bit. And this will allow us to control when the add-on instruction is executed. Since the tag does not exist, we recreate it, and it allows our run to be verified. We are now complete with configuring the add-on instruction. So let's download it to our controller and see what results we produce. So nothing populates in the add-on instruction because we haven't executed the trigger bit. So when we toggle the trigger bit, we'll immediately see a short term of enabling and then a done bit. Note what has happened to our output bits that we discussed. A number of those are energized at this point. Some other things to note in the add-on instruction are the bits populated with the list of activated slaves, list of detected slaves, list of projected slaves. These are represented by ones where there are I.O. slaves on the network. So to complete the live demonstration, I wanted to show how we could simulate an error on the AS interface network and observe it through the add-on instruction. Let's take a closer look at the parameters associated to the add-on instruction. If we navigate to the program tags and click on the monitor tags, we will see how the currently all the parameters are recognized on the AS interface network. Let's take a closer look at the list of parameters. Here, I want to zero in on a specific bit, be it bit 4 or node 4 on the AS interface network. Currently, in each case, our list of activated slaves, our list of detected slaves, our list of projected slaves has a 1 noted at node 4. There's no delta difference between activated slaves or detected slaves or projected slaves, so that is noted as 0. One other thing to note 
is our configuration OK bit. Since there is no configuration error on the network, it is noted as 1. At this point, Connie will simulate the error by having node 4 fail on our network. So as we return back to our main routine, we need to trigger the instruction to observe that change on our add-on instruction. So we toggled it and the change takes effect. As we go back to the program tags to monitor those, immediately what can be observed is that no longer is node 4 activated or even detected on our AS interface network. However, node 4 is still projected and noted with a 1. So that's indicating our AS interface gateway still has that in its node table and thinking that still it, it, it exists on the network and eventually will will return to the network. As we note on Delta A we observe a 1 at the node 4 location. And the final observation is that our configuration OK LED is no longer a 1 but a 0 indicating that there is a failure on the network. So Connie will put the node 4 back on our network and we will return to our main routine to toggle the condition. At this point, all our activated slaves, detected slaves, and projected slaves are all in sync. There is no delta A issue and our configuration is OK. Finally, in the presentation today, I wanted to make you aware of some updated AS interface literature. The first is the Maintenance and Troubleshooting Guide. This was released just recently in March of 2016. The link for the documentation is provided below. This guide provides helpful tips and tricks for troubleshooting and maintaining existing AS interface networks. I encourage you to use this guide because it also includes some helpful links to some YouTube videos that may help further in your maintaining and troubleshooting of AS interface networks. A second helpful document is the product overview guide for AS interface. This was released again this year in June 2016. The intent of this document is really to help you be able to tell the story about AS Interface and all the key components that we discussed in the presentation today. It provides a high level overview of the product portfolio and the technical features of each of the products offered by Pepperell and Fuchs for AS Interface. So let's discuss how you could connect with us here at Pepperell and Fuchs. There are six easy ways this is possible. Tech support, ask the expert, our Pepper and Fuchs website, our Twitter handle, our blogs, and our YouTube channel. Included on the slide is my contact information. I encourage each of you to keep in touch with me on any questions, concerns you may have on AS Interface. Thank you for viewing the presentation today on AS Interface add-on instruction for RS Logics 5000. Hopefully, as programmers, you can take advantage of this add-on instruction discussed to help in troubleshooting your AS Interface systems connected to Rockwell Automation PLCs.